finally made it around the Cape two days ago. And since then we are relaxing here in the beautiful area of Vuvuru in the middle finger of Halkiriki. And our background is Athos, the mystic mountain. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's normally full of little motorboats here and shit, but uh, since it's off season, they're all gone and we have it quite for ourselves. With the motorboats, I guess the sun is also gone, so it's a bit colder, but you can still swim and everything. <laughs> it's quite nice. Like walking down this side, isn't it? So we have uh, found ourselves quite in a dilemma because uh, the north wind is becoming stronger and stronger, and we still want to go. I think we have uh, now decided not to go to Samothraki and further north because it seems a bit uh, too much of a struggle. But we still want to go to Limnos and down. So we don't really know what we want to do, but we are on What's the move. The if we should stay here for, I don't know, another week until those north winds go, or if we should go before they really pick up. But we also need water today. Should we stay or should we go, go now? <laughs>
So we visited Athos, mm -hmm. the holy mountain of Chalkidiki. Yes. How do you feel about that? What is it? I mean, I felt two things when I saw Athos. I was in awe of the natural beauty of the mountain. It is absolutely stunning. It's it's like something out of Lord of the Rings or something like that. Absolutely amazing. And the way that these old monasteries have been built on the side of the cliffs. and That was really impressive. At the same time, <laughs> I also feel quite angry when I look at Athos, when we sail past, because it is an enormous symbol of the fact that even in our Western world, where we talk about human rights and we are all equal and the EU is based on the principle of men and women being equal in all territories, there is this huge monumental symbol saying that you're not always that equal and women can and will apparently always be second-rate citizens. The Holy Mountain of Athos is the spiritual capital of the uh, Orthodox Christian world and it has been so for a thousand years. So it's, it's sort of like the Vatican. It's like a state within Greece. So you, you're, you're technically in Greece, you're technically in the EU but then you're not like they even have their own time zone and apparently they they follow the Byzantine time zone and the year so they are on a almost on a whole other planet than we are in more respects than one <laughs> so Mount Athos is actually quite big it's not just a mountain it's also the area behind it it's 335 square kilometers it, it's quite big and there are about 20 monasteries there and I think it's about 2,000 monks living there. Also, like, we sail past the, the Russian um, monastery there. It looks like quite a lovely palace. There's a huge Russian presence um, because of the Orthodox Church, of course. Um, but it doesn't take a lot of Google searches to realize that there is definitely something rotten in the state of Athens. But um, I don't want to get too much into that here. The thing about Mount Athos is it's the largest area in the world where women are not allowed. And they have not been allowed there for 1,000 years, which is insane. It's not just women, it's anything female. They have to import the dairy and eggs from outside because they will not allow a female, well, cow, goat, sheep or a chicken to be there. Do not wonder why. <laughs> By the way, can I just say that cats, female cats, are allowed because they're quite good uh, mouse and uh, rat hunters. So they are allowed. But everything else that they can control, and of course wild animal birds and insects, that's also quite difficult. But anything else female, heraus. So there are two reasons why women are not allowed on Mount Athos. And the first one is that the monks there, they have to be completely undistracted from praying. So the thought is if there is anything female around, especially a woman, a human woman I, I hope, um, they will be too distracted and they cannot focus on their prayer um, and this specific lifestyle and they won't be able to stay celibate. So they have to lock themselves on a mountain away that, from everything female in order to control themselves. That's why I'm atheist. The other reason, and the religious one, and why this whole Mount Athos exists in the first place, and um, I'm not too... I, I'm not a religious person. Um, I respect that other people have their religions, so that's fine. Let's say that. But I don't know much about religion, and I especially don't know a lot about Virgin Mary. What I understand is that at some point she was actually like some sort of boat refugee, and she was trying to get to Cyprus. And the wind blew her too far and she ended up in Mount Athos. And that must have been about 2,000 years ago. Um, and she fell in love with this beautiful place. It is very beautiful. And then about 1,000 years ago, uh, Father Master Manipulator, is what I call him, he said that the spirit of Virgin Mary uh, came to him 
and said that she, if she could, and asked to have the mountain just for her. And you can fact check this, it might be wrong, but it's, I think it's, this is the basic gist of it. Anyway, so they decided that this mountain, this place, should be completely and utterly only for worshipping the Virgin Mary. And they decided that the best way to do that was to put a lot of men there who will just spend their entire time obsessing about Virgin Mary. Oh, okay. I think... <laughs> I think it might be a misinterpretation um, if there was, let's say, there was a spirit, Virgin Mary, asking for the mountain. Um, I think maybe she was thinking more like for her and for the image of her. And I think the image of her is women who are fleeing persecution, who are fleeing like the terrible state of the world and looking for a better life. So I personally think that the mountain should be given to women and especially women who are refugees and need a place to stay, but that's a whole other thing. But yeah, it should definitely, I, I think we got a bit, the interpretation of uh, Virgin Mary's wish a bit wrong there. So that's the reason why women are not anything female, are not allowed on this uh, peninsula and why we had to sail more than 500 meters off the coast because I could actually go to jail for a year, up to a year, if I were to step onto the peninsula. Lovely, thank you. So I, <laughs> so it angers me and I, I have to say in the face of what other women around the world are fighting for right this minute, it's nothing. But it still really pisses me off that in the EU there is a place where you can be exempted from ex for living up and adhering to the basic principles of human rights and what this part of the world is supposed to be built on. And you can go about and just making your own laws and rules. Like they, and on the same time still take EU money. Like, what the heck? And by the way... We sail past her, and they're very much controlling the narrative whenever they go in the media, but they don't show how many big-ass houses they have there. I don't think they need the EU money, to be honest. That's just, but that's a whole lot Huge thing. solar anyway, panels. So, yes. Hot water, it electricity, is, yeah. big windows. They've got a good life there, and I don't want to take anything from them. Maybe I do, but that's... <laughs> But it should be shared. It should be shared, or it should be the same at least. Or it should you be. Know, if you don't want to allow women, then don't allow 110 tourists every day, male tourists every day in there. Yeah, nobody like they should call be allowed. Pilgrims. Then allow everybody to come there as a pilgrim. Or nobody. Or allow nobody to come there as a pilgrim. But then they also have to have nuns. They also have to have nuns, or the monasteries can be off limits, but the the grounds can still be visited. Like, there are many ways you can go about this, but I just think it's weird. Yeah. But it is a huge gigantic symbol of the fact that how men, usually men, but powerful figures, can, under the disguise of religion, can so quickly take our rights away. And we're just supposed to accept that. Living the tough life, huh, little buddy? He went off chasing goats today. But he listened to us eventually. Aww, look at him. I think it was a combination of him not being remotely fast or tall enough to, <laughs> to, Big enough, yeah. to follow them into the bushes. So he kind of gave up, making us a bit proud. This is the second take because I had tomato sauce. You still have a little bit in the corner. Apparently, you're not allowed to. Let me see your chin. 
apparently right. one now is you're pretty. It's amazing how many places a grown man can get tomato sauce. Apparently, it's not allowed to have tomato sauce on your face and being on YouTube. <laughs> so anyway, we managed yesterday and we sailed past Athos. Then we had planned to go to Limnos, or worst case, to Ayus of Stratus, a little island further south. However, as we got around the Cape there, I think uh, the Holy Mary, the Holy Spirit of Holy Mary was angry at us and gave us like 30 knots right on the nose. So I still thought we can still make Ayus of Stratius, but it was still too much wind and too big of waves to try and fight against it. So I think it was Poseidon telling us to get our asses back home. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I decided then, we quickly decided in these miserable conditions uh, to sail south, uh, half wind to, to this parade. It took a while, like we were, we did 75 nautical miles yesterday. We started at 6.30 in the morning and we arrived at 10 at night. Just here. And this morning we took a little hike to the monastery, but it was closed. Meanwhile, we're out of water, we're out of food, out of energy. Everything sucks. Poseidon is right. Yeah, everything. Time to go home. Everything sucks. <laughs> And yeah, the only good part was like two, three hours yesterday sailing downwind where there was some tunas following us. And I saw two turtles and turtles. Apart from that, it was quite miserable, to be honest. It was quite rolly and then the wind stopped and we had to engine the last three hours in the dark and it was not nice. Come into a very narrow anchorage here and anchor. And then it was rolly. I'm telling that's, that's you, rolly. sailing is no fun. <laughs> Go camping. it the whole way but anyway but we are low on fuel and low on wind currently and it's supposed to rain a lot but uh, and wind a lot or blow a lot but neither is really happening wish us some luck here
should have changed my sink. <laughs> Trousers is drenched. Everything is drenched. <laughs> but I'm dry up. Our body's dry. Ah. And the sails get a really good end of the season wash. Everything basically. Stop now. But yeah. it's dripping through our cockpit. <laughs> Yeah, enough is enough, right Kai? It's almost over.